Travis, how are you? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. How's it going? Good. How are you? Good. Yeah. Thanks for doing this with me. I appreciate it. Hey, no problem. I'm uh, glad to have be here. So. so if you could just start by introducing yourself and then the name of your company. Uh, my name is Daryl Bavick and I am owner operator of Daryl's Total Lawn Care. So how long have you guys been in business? Um, so this is actually the second full season, full year. Why did, is this what you always wanted to do or what was the idea behind kicking um, this off? You know, ever since a kid, I've always cut grass. Um, but I've always kind of done it as like a side thing. Um, having tr- children at a young age, I kind of had to have a 40 hour job, you know, around Metro Detroit. We got a lot of plants. So, I mean, I had to have insurance, things like that. Um, so I always had it as a side thing, but I kind of just started advertising a little bit and um, really wanted to uh, pursue it. It just kind of took off. And then I, this is year two, obviously. So what did that look like starting off? Like how many machines, how many people now? Where are you at right now? And what are so you kind of looking to do? Yeah, so I'm a solo operator. Um, I work by myself. Right now, I have a 52-inch ZTHD, and I have a 32-inch Pro Stance. Okay, okay. And I was push mowing those backyards, and I wanted to be more efficient, and I wanted to save my knees a little bit and legs, and, you know, so we got 32, and it's been great. And how many places do you go to for people that don't completely understand what landscaping companies do? Um what does that look like for you? I finished the season off with 63 clients. And so I'm doing roughly between like 10 and 13 per day. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, yeah. But, you know, I try to keep the route density to where I'm able to accomplish that. Because, okay. you know, when you're in the truck and driving around, it, you know, time is money and you just not, it, it just don't work that way. So is the competition really tough in your area? Um, it is, but it's not, I, you know, there's going to be competition everywhere you go. Um, I just try to set myself differently from them. Um, I'm not saying that nobody does bad work cause they do great work, but I just, customer service is number one with me, um, quality work. And I think, you know, having those two things, it kind of just sets me apart from certain things. Um, especially when pre-existing clients from other people contact me you know, and I hear these horror stories and it's just like, it makes me wonder what's really going on with some of these guys. Um, but I end up coming in and it works out great. And how are they hearing about you? Is that more of like, is that why you are so strong on social media? Is that kind of what brings them to you? Well, every time I ask, it's either off next door that they get my information or it's Google. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, I do get some people that reach out on Facebook. My Instagram just seems to be more so of a lawn care community. Um, I don't get I don't get too many messages other than, you know, fellow lawn care brethren. But um, it's mainly Google and Nextdoor that I get the most business. Yeah, and I was looking at that for a lot of the lawn care companies that are on social media, like specifically on Instagram. I see it a lot. It seems like it's more you know, landscape companies following landscape companies. Is that what you're seeing? And do you guys just all kind of like play well together? Yeah. Um, so we, I, I guess we we follow each and everybody. Um, I follow a lot of landscaping. I don't do a lot, a lot of landscaping, but I do like to watch that stuff and it is very knowledgeable. You know, I follow guys that do um, <clears throat> asphalt, concrete work, construction. So somehow, some way it kind of all fits in, um, you know, from one business owner to another. It's just, it's, it's good to establish relationships and see what these guys are doing. And you never know what you may like, need, or could reach out to somebody and start those relationships. Yeah, do you pick up stuff from them and do you reach out and ask questions or is that kind of something um, you just pay attention to? And Yeah, I don't really do a whole lot of reaching out for question-wise. Um, do a lot of commenting, do a lot of liking, messaging. Hey, you know, keep up the good work. Uh, just try to stay positive and put the positive vibes out there, you know, so... <laughs> That's what they need on social media. <laughs> Big time. <laughs> it's a lot of, otherwise it's just a lot of complaining. So <laughs> yeah. 
then talking about so going from you know 2021 2022 and now into 23 what are the lessons you learned this year that you might want to bring into next year um so i really only have one big main lesson um that i really learned that really was a big negative impact um it wasn't a big negative impact but it's something that i'm you know i definitely know moving forward so i my thing is to always document your work take pictures of it um and if you can upload those pictures with the invoice i would do that um i had a client it didn't it didn't last long it was probably like three months later that we were no longer working together um try to say that they don't remember this payment you know and i had to try and prove that i was there and cut the lawn i only had pictures i usually take pictures of everything you know yeah, and yeah. One time I just didn't do it, you know, so I got paid for the one, but I didn't get paid for the other. Um, it is what it is, but that's my main lesson that I learned from that is to always document the work. Um, I'm able to upload it in with my invoices. And since that day moving forward, <laughs> you're going to get a before and after every time I was there. And now, now you won't forget. Nope. Why do the the before and then the after just so that you make sure, okay, this is the work that I did. Do you have to timestamp that too? Um, I don't, but the timestamping it it's a plus, but I just mainly do it to say, hey, you know, this is the before and this is the after. You could definitely tell a difference. Um don't usually have I've only had that one problem. So I usually oh, yeah. I got a really nice good list of clients. Um and everyone's really great. So that's the only the only bad thing I had go wrong. Oh, yeah. So um I but, mean it's a good thing to learn then. <laughs> yeah, it is what it is. But uh it moving forward, I'm gonna be taking the four and after. It's just just so you know, because some people might say, Hey, maybe it's the same picture. So I just let you know I was there, let you know I left. It's cleaned up now, it looks a lot better moving forward, you know. So Going from there, you know, going and talking about the documentation and everything for 23, obviously now you said you're not going to forget to do that. Um, do you think there's anything else that you see changing when it comes to lawn care moving to next year? Or, I mean, is it is it going to be growing competition or is there any like trends that you see? Um, Honestly, no. Um, I don't see any trends. Um, like I said, the competition's always going to be there. I just, I try to keep myself in that, that quality bracket and that customer care bracket. Um, and it kind of sets me apart from other people. And so I don't really plan to just like worry about the competition. I just worry about growing my business, reinvesting, um, and just, you know, supporting the community. What are you guys doing right now? So, like, are, are you still doing some cleanups? I saw earlier there is one yet, but is there a lot of snow there yet? Or how how's that going for you? No, we haven't got next to anything. We had a couple little squirrels and light dustings, but it wasn't enough for me to go out. So, yeah, we haven't had anything yet. I'm still doing cleanups here and there. I've got all my properties done. So it's just mainly people inquiring, reaching out and, you know, just this one off cleanup. So. For it being legit winter, is that pretty rare for you guys? Uh, Yeah, by now we probably would have had at least one or two storms. Um, I was looking back on some of the memories of last year and, you know, late, late November I was out there. So we had <laughs> snow last year. So this year it's been a little mild. Now, one other thing that I did want to ask about is for maybe high schoolers or, you know, younger people that are trying to get into that side of the business what advice would you have for them? Is there any schooling that they should be looking into or who should they be reaching out to if they're interested? Well, I mean, if they're into it, then they should probably already be cutting their own grass at home, maybe a couple neighbors. Um, at that point in time, the word of mouth works really great. I just say, go for it, you know, start knocking on doors. Um, if that's what you want to do and pursue your own. Now, if you just want to work for a guy, you really, all you got to do is just, get on Google and look, you know, just look at these lawn care um, companies and just see who's hiring. But for the, the young entrepreneur, 
I think that they should just start going door to door. I mean, that's what I started doing as a kid, just knocking on doors. Now that we have this digital world and we're able to be on the internet, things like that, um, just start getting in these Facebook groups, get on Facebook, get on Instagram, get on next door, just let people know you're available for work. Are there quite a few of those Facebook groups and everything ready or that are just active? As far as like your, your specific town and city that you live in, um, neighborhoods, things like that, they should have their own special little groups and you can join those and you can, you know, advertise your service. I, I get quite a bit of work from that and it is free, you know, it's free advertisement. So it's kind of like a word of mouth thing. And then, you know, you get your clients in there. Oh, he does excellent work, things like that. And it, just a snowball effect, you know, it just it just starts taking off. So word of mouth is probably the key. Yeah. Um, but I always encourage um, online marketing. Um, I plan to do like a door to door thing, mailing this this spring. So. And then when you started yours, what was probably the toughest thing that you learned just trying to, you know, get into it and grow? The toughest thing was really just trying to build that clientele. That was a big thing for me. Not that any of my clients were leaving me, but it's kind of hard to throw out my price. And then this guy comes in and just, you know, and usually it's those people that are already shopping and, but they come and go, but it is what it is. Is there anything else that you think people should be aware of for this coming year? Or is it more just, Hey, just make sure that you document everything. For me, mainly it's just, just document everything. I, I strongly encourage it. I haven't really ran into any real bad problems yet. I'm sure they're coming, you know, but uh, I haven't really, I haven't really had any problems. I mean, I communicate well with my customers. I don't have any issues with them. Um, They follow the policies. You know, I respect their yard. I mean, it's, it's been very good, but like I would say, I always have a couple extras of things and weed whips, extra gas cans, have your two cycle on hand, just find ways to be efficient. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) You don't want any wasted time. (laughs) No. Well, hey, thanks for talking with us. Yeah, no problem. I appreciate you reaching out. Is there anything that you wanted to touch on that you think we might have missed? Um, not really. I mean, I'm I I have some notes here, but um, really invest in yourself. Um, invest in the business. Um, because like I said, buying that thirty-two inch Gravely was it, it. It helped me out tremendously. I was able to grow. I'm looking to maybe hire a guy this spring. Oh, cool. Um, and just, I really want to grow the business in 23. That's my goal. Grow the business. I'd like to get a dump, a dump, um, dump, bleh, a dumpster. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah. I like to get a dumpster. Um, that way I can kind of start to maybe take on light landscaping work, hauling things off, things like that. So just trying to grow. And how did, you come to the decision to get the Gravely, the 32 inch. Well, actually, my dealer, Wayne Lawn and Garden, they're actually, I mean, five minutes from my Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I walked in there, really liked the really liked the machine. Um, and I came home with it. <laughs> I actually went there last spring. We did dealer visits and everything. So we swung by there. So um, so I do know those yeah, guys. Oh, cool. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, they're good people. <laughs> Thanks again. I appreciate it, man. You know, I I'm really pleased with the equipment and I think I'll forever be a gravely guy. You guys make great machines and I like them. Um they work well for my business. Team Gravely. <laughs> All right, man. All right, have a good one. All right, you too.